I've been told that gentlemen prefer blondes, and I think that might be true, because I have fallen head over heels in love with BB. I'm talking about this cutie right here. BB Bloxburg. I don't know if it's the blonde hair, the freckles, the ponytail, the baggy t-shirt, or the bloomers, but I just can't stop thinking about her. It's possible that you recognize her. You may have clicked on this video because you know who she is, or perhaps you haven't heard of her. Maybe you fell asleep and YouTube auto-played this video, in which case, sweet dreams. I didn't know who she was until I started looking at her, it, into her. Bibi Bloxburg is a cute witch, gets into mischief, casting spells with her magical catchphrase, Hex Hex. She is essentially the German Dennis the Menace, but she also likes horses. But after I did a bit of research into the character, I realised she's a lot more wholesome than that. She's definitely wife material. Manifested into being by British-Austrian writer Elfie Donnelly, Bibi immediately won the hearts of listeners in her first appearance in a radio drama in 1980. The character would then go on to be featured in children's books, beginning in 1985, books which went on to become very successful. If you grew up in Germany, there's a good chance you learned to read with the Bibi Blocksburg and Benjamin the Elephant books. In the 90s, Bibi would find a small but passionate audience worldwide, with the start of her own cartoon. The cartoon would be dubbed in 24 languages, meaning the world has had an opportunity to get to know Bibi. Unfortunately, though the show would be available in 24 languages, in some form, it can only be watched in full in its original German language. In fact, no dub was made for the fifth and final series or the Halloween special. Marketing and support for BB Blocksburg comes across as rather non-committal outside of Germany. Even the live-action movies have failed to find a release outside of Germany. And the DVD releases of these films and cartoons only have German language. They don't even have any English subtitles. That seems wild to me. I believe a character like BB Blocksburg could be really successful if marketed sufficiently. After all, I've taken a liking to her, and I don't think I ever read any of the books or watched any of the cartoons as a kid. I do have memories of Benjamin the Elephant, though. Maybe I'm confusing him with the elephant slapped on the front of all those Dendi products. As well as being a young witch, BB has experience rearing, training, and riding horses. If you don't know her for her witchcraft, you may know her for her adventures on horseback with her BFF Tina. This was another series of books and an animated cartoon, with the magic taking a backseat to BB and Tina's adventures at Mrs. Fucking Martin's farm. All that thinking about a beautiful future, growing old and drinking lemonade with BB Bloxburg on the porch got me acting a little unwise, and I ended up doing something silly. I played every single BB Bloxburg game. Well, okay, most of them. I wasn't aware the franchise had this many games released over the last 23 years, but it has. Starting in the early 2000s with the point-and-click adventure games, all the way up to 2022's More Adventures with Horses. Released on the PS5. <laughs> this. On the PS5. I've played a few of these over the last couple of years, but... I never take the time to play them all. Until now. I know you kids these days like your tier lists. So why don't I review every one of these BB Blocksburg games and give them a rating? Yeah. Yeah, why not? I find the whole franchise fascinating. And these are games I had yet to experience. What if I came across something truly special? A game that would have resonated with me as a child. So come join me on this grand adventure. Through over 20 years of BB Blocksburg video games. Because you know full well both you and I have nothing better to do. So some ground rules, this is my tier list. If you don't agree with me, it's my opinion. Everybody's got an opinion, and you might think mine stinks. I'm going in order of release, more or less, and I'm going to use my initiative on a few of these. BB Blocksburg Storybook Games. So we're going to start here, and I'm going to bundle all these together, because for all intents and purposes, these are essentially the same thing. Point and click adventure games. I know, six years worth of games being bundled together, but it'll make sense. In the same vein as the revered humongous entertainment titles, BB Blocksburg had her own set of adventure games starting in the early 2000s playable on PC and Macintosh. 
being standard Macromedia projector-based applications, you would expect them to be playable on modern versions of Windows, but they are not. I ended up having to install the games on my Windows XP virtual machine to be able to play them. Possibly something to do with antiquated copy protection measures. Information on these games is hard to come by, but there were at least 12 games released on PC based on BB Blocksburg, and at least another 6 based on BB and Tina. GameFAQ erroneously lists just one of these games under the year 2001, but there really were lots of them, released as early as 2000 and as late as 2006. The first game I tried has you click on objects around Bibi's house and the various locations she visits, combining items together or casting spells from her spellbook in order to solve simple puzzles. The second game I tried was much the same, but it is based on Bibi and Tina instead. So casting magic had been replaced with caring for horses. This game seemed to lack an obvious premise and I therefore felt less invested from the get-go. The third game I tried was the latest I could get my hands on, Der Wer Hexte Liebesbrief. This one seemed to be about Bibi writing a love letter and casting a spell on it. The spell makes a man fall in love with a traffic light, amongst other things. It had a bunch of minigames, most notably one based on PopCap's Azuma, which itself plagiarised the classic arcade game Puzzle Loop. I figured this little grouping of titles was enough to get a good gist of what they're like, without having to play them all. Having an episode of the cartoon running on your own computer with voice acting, animation, music, sound effects must have been amazing for BB fans back in the 2000s. If I was a BB fan, I know I would have been jealous of any friends who had one of these games back when I was growing up. I can see the appeal, so my rating for these is a solid C. I'd enjoy these a lot more if I understood them, or if they were more cooperative with modern versions of Windows. They are gorgeous looking games with great sound and animation. Even though so many of these were released, they don't strike me as simply products. Love for the franchise has definitely been poured into them. C tier might seem a little bit low given all the praise I'm giving them, but there are 18 of these games. I figured that C is probably an accurate average if I played all of them, because I'm sure I would be bored by the time I'd played 18 similar titles. BB Bloxburg Imban de Hexenkugel Imban de Hexenkugel is a top-down adventure game reminiscent of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Unfortunately, the game itself pales in comparison to the game it borrows its mechanics from, being a slow and sludgy trodge through some admittedly nice-looking screens. BB can find and equip items or magic spells to the A or B button in the game's menu, accessible with select. And the start button is your dedicated Passivert button. It is a difficult game to recommend, if only because I managed to get completely stuck on the game's first boss. It's not really clear if I should be there yet, or if any of my magic is even having an effect on them. I know how to consistently avoid their attacks, but whether or not it's even possible to inflict damage, who can say? Thankfully, there doesn't appear to be a life count or a game over state, so as long as you can somehow figure out how to make progress, then even the German language barrier likely won't present much of an issue to players who don't sprechen die language. That said, the game never specifically told me how to fight back against the witch, not even in German, so this is something of a roadblock for me. My rating for this game is a solid C tier. I could probably learn to enjoy this if I could figure out how to make significant progress in the game. The graphics are colourful and the music has that nice amiga e arpeggio going on. It isn't anything special that we haven't seen in other licensed Game Boy Colour games, but it doesn't particularly stand out as bad either. I would have loved this game, I was all over Link's Awakening, Bomberman Quest and similar games as a kid. Bibi Untina, Folan Felix in Gafar. This game shares some DNA with the last one, though now you have both Bibi and her friend Tina to play as. Most of the game is spent searching for a foal named Felix who ran off. The game has you searching each area for a few items and completing a horse riding game between each area. The game made a whole lot more sense and I managed to pretty much beat it. The music is definitely better and there's some variety to the gameplay. There are a few things that weren't particularly good. When travelling downwards in the forest, there's a high chance you'll collide with projectiles during the screen transition, causing an unavoidable health loss. And the enemies that just decide to home in on you until you're dead. Like these black chickens. They can just fuck off. I get the feeling both this title and the last one were developed under some manner of crunch or budgetary limitation and a lot of the assets are clearly reused between this and Imban de Hexenkugel. Despite similarities, this game is 
still clearly the superior of the two. The only thing this title has along the lines of a boss battle is a confrontation with a wild beast. The thing takes a ludicrous amount of hits to defeat, and the only way to realistically do so is to make it clip into an obstacle, rendering it unable to move. How any child was meant to beat this boss, legitimately, is beyond me. I shall place Folan Felix in Gafar in B tier. Yeah, I genuinely didn't hate this one. The graphics are really nice for Game Boy Color. This game is pretty short and it took me just under an hour to beat it casually. BB Bloodsburg, De Magisch Hexen Kreis. And we've moved on to the Game Boy Advance. This title takes the form of an isometric adventure game with lovely visuals that remind me of Habo Hotel. The sprites are really nice. They managed to make BB look really adorable here. Gameplay of this title involves finding ingredients to perform magic, so BB can undo a spell that she may or may not have been responsible for casting. Not only is this an extremely charming game, it also seems a lot more fitting than the previous titles for the Game Boy Color, as this game actually involves solving puzzles by using magic. It also feels a lot more grounded in the world of BB Bloxburg, with more characters making cameo appearances. You can collect stars which are consumed when activating your spells. Your spells can only briefly incapacitate the various small animals and inanimate objects that are trying their hardest to ruin your day, but at least they're easier to avoid than in the previous titles. They don't particularly home in on you either, like the black chickens. The music is acceptable by Game Boy Advance standards. It never has been all that great when it comes to sound quality. Being a 32-bit system with some voice sample playback capabilities, it would be nice to have heard the BB Bloxburg theme with vocals, or to hear her say Hex Hex when casting a spell. Between areas you get flight sections and these are a lot of fun. Makes me wonder why they never made a cotton style game with BB Bloxburg. That's a guaranteed seller right there. This one I decided to stop playing a few stages in because there is genuinely live stream potential here. I would certainly hate to play further and then have to start over. Best keep this one aside and take a proper look at it later. It's definitely A tier though. Bibi und Tina, Ferien auf der Martinshof. Much as the two Game Boy Color games shared similarities, so did the two Game Boy Advance games. The Bibi and Tina game reuses much of the last game's assets, but instead of being a Bibi Bloxburg game, it's a Bibi and Tina game. I tried, but I couldn't really get into this one. It wasn't immediately apparent what I had to do. Instead, wandering around aimlessly, looking for things to plant in the ground, or the tools required to look after a stray dog. I'm not opposed to a good animal raising sim, or even a bad animal raising sim. I've played my fair few for achievements and trophies, and I can tell when one has been phoned in. If there is more to be seen in this game, I am skeptical. A pleasant art style and inoffensive audio does not a great game make. After the last game seemed to capture the joy of BB's world so well, it's sad to see this BB and Tina game squander that. I'm sure fans of the franchise might be able to get some joy out of this, but I can't, which is a real shame. Popping this one in D tier. There are games that I am likely to return to, and unfortunately this is not one of them. BB Bloxburg, New Stat, Im Hex Chaos. As we enter the late 2000s, BB and friends make their leap to the Nintendo DS. Despite being a 2008 title, this has all the sins of early Nintendo DS games. The forced touchscreen control for every little thing, disgusting pre-rendered sprites, uncompelling minigames. I will give the game credit for its use of voice samples, though by the time the Nintendo DS was around, this was far less impressive. Going straight into F tier, where it belongs. BB and Tina, The Great Paper Chase. This is the first of our BB Bloxburg games to contain an English language option, which is super awesome to see. This is a selection of minigames with horse riding sections between each of them. The game makes a liberal use of short video clips from the BB and Tina animated series, but otherwise the presentation is fairly lacking. It's not the most amazing thing on this tier list, but it's far from the worst. It's a run-of-the-mill minigame collection with a few horse grooming segments, but otherwise a lack of gripping narrative. You're taking part in an old-fashioned paper chase, and you must ride to the next location to take part in each of the challenges. So it is essentially like a cross-country trek with some activities. I'm sure you've done something similar to this. Maybe orienteering at school? Same idea. I will give the game credit for allowing you to use your magic to clean your horse if you can't be bothered to do it legitimately. It costs the game's collectible horseshoes to do this, but completing most minigames gives you more horseshoes than you genuinely need, and there's usually a good 20 or so to collect during the horse races, so you'll always have enough. 
It's great to see BB actually using her magic in a BB and Tina game, seeing as there's no reason for her not to flaunt her magic powers when given a chance. Overall, this is a low B tier. I will admit it is elevated by its English tech support, something shockingly scarce considering the franchise has been translated and dubbed so many times over the years. BB und Tina Das Grosse Unwetter First impressions of this one were really solid. We had sprites reminiscent of the two games on Game Boy Advance, a voice acted introduction, and the choice of both touchscreen and standard button controls. When you walk under trees, your characters get darker and they go semi-transparent behind buildings. It's really nice looking, cohesively gels. After the ranch is struck by lightning and a bad storm, BB and Tina are left to pick up the slack. This involves wandering around the ranch, talking to NPCs, and then completing the tasks they ask you to do. The problem with this game is that it will ask you to do something like grab herbs, but then won't tell you where they are. Sometimes you get a mission marker on the top screen and that's great, other times you get nothing and you have to fumble around until you land on top of what you're looking for. I don't really have the patience. I might have had a little more patience had the game emulated properly in Desmume, but the occasionally cutting out an overdriven audio along with a rendering glitch on the top screen kinda sealed this game's fate. I might have enjoyed it more if they bothered to put in a language option besides German. I'm putting this in D tier. I'm not sure if it opens up or goes anywhere. Like I said, I don't have the patience to see. An amazing game might be hiding in here somewhere, but I don't have hope. BB Bloxburg, Das Grosser Hexenbessenrennen. This is the first of three broomstick racing games based on BB Bloxburg to be released, and the first of two to be released on the Nintendo Wii. The combination makes sense. The Wii is a party console and mascot racers are ten a penny on the platform. Anybody who has a Wii has the remote and that's all they need. Besides, the Wii was considered an easy platform to develop for. And who's your real competition? Action Girls Racing? In terms of licensed mascot racers, this is fine. There's a lot I don't like about its dog shit presentation, for sure, but mechanically it's okay. It's not fantastic, and when your racing game has me wanting the Mario Kart Wii item balance, that's saying something. Because nobody should want the Mario Kart Wii item balance. The course design is horrendous, straight up dire. You're on a broomstick but get stuck on invisible ass walls consistently. Rival racers can go zooming around the course with pinpoint precision, which I know for a fact isn't possible by human hands. Why do the courses bend the way they do? Why do they have strange semi-transparent walls blocking you off? In most other races, these would be sneaky shortcuts that would help you get the upper hand. But not here. And the presentation, they go to the effort of having a music track for each course, but they're just variations on the world's theme. Variations could be good, but it's the same MIDI fed through different instruments. If you have the time to make three variations of a song and you have the space for them on the disc, make them at least a little more distinctive. And the visuals, dear God. I know it's the Wii and you're not exactly working with a powerhouse, but by 2010 we had Mario Kart Wii. There's a perfect place to start and say, what about this visually gels? I know that a small German developer making a likely rushed racer isn't going to have all the time in the world to make something that looks on par with Nintendo's in-house work, but did they not look at the Fulbright's character models on a nighttime course and say, gee, doesn't that look shit? Maybe we should do something about it? But honestly, it's fine. It's somewhere in C tier. One can only hope they overhauled the visual style and track design philosophy before the next entry. BB and Tina Jump and Ride. Back on the DS, we have Jump and Ride. Initial impressions were negative. Another BB and Tina game that starts without spoken narration tosses me straight into a riding minigame and reuses assets. I was ready to write this one off, which would have been totally the wrong thing to do. The story focuses on BB and Tina having to collect some photos which are blown away. I think I managed to ascertain something about a photo contest or exhibition, and therefore these priceless photos need to be reacquired. So it has a story, admittedly one of those means to an end type stories, which means you don't have to rely on too much external information and lore, and you certainly don't have to worry about impacting upon the status quo. So the first stage of the game is a riding minigame, and no sooner than you've come to terms with this potentially being the whole game, BB and Tina split up and tackle platforming challenges on their own. That's right, this is a bona fide BB and Tina platformer. Finally, 
How many games has it been and we finally get a platformer? Now, is it a great platformer? It's fine. It reminds me of Gianna Sisters DS, just maybe not as well baked. Now, that's a great game. If only they would make a BB and Tina game that plays like Gianna Sisters DS. If only. Yeah, this game has a feeling of nothing here is even remotely special, but what is here is done well. This is no award winner, and yet I found myself struggling to stop playing, prying myself away after 45 minutes because there was still a ton of these games left to play. Major criticisms are the abundance of touchscreen minigames that kill the flow of the game, stopping the player to give a sheep or a rabbit a rub with the stylus does nothing but waste the player's time, and stopping people during a riding stage to clean their horse's hooves or complete a memory game can only be described as padding. And the quizzes. Ugh. To get the game's special collectible puzzle pieces, sometimes you have to answer quiz questions. Of course, like the whole game, these are in German. Even if Google Lens translated the question for me, I still don't know the answer. They're asking me things like, which flower is carnivorous, or which tree is deciduous? Like UK schools are going to teach anybody that? All they care about is getting kids to pass exams. Anyway, jump and ride. English name, German text, and halfway decent. A low A tier for sure. BB Blocksburg, Das Gestolen Hexbusch. A 2011 release, but internally, this game has a copyright year of 2009. It shares a lot of similarities with 2008's Neustad im Hex Chaos, so it may well have only been in development for a year, using that as a base. In many ways, it's something of an improvement upon that. If you recall, it was the game that used ugly pre-rendered 3D sprites and was a poorly put-together minigame collection. Once again, that's what we have here too, but there's a bit more cohesion, not a lot. Suffice to say, this one is a little bit better overall. It started out very promising with a voiceover, but that soon gave way to walls of text without any voice acting. And once again, it's a series of minigames, but now there's something of an actual decent plot knitting things together. BB is tasked with delivering a special magic book, but decides, what harm could one peak do? She gets distracted by an evil witch that steals the book. In other words, the Hexbuch is gestohlen. What really bugs me about this game, seemingly more than anything else, is that nothing really works together. You have ugly pre-rendered graphics mishmashed against these gorgeous looking hand-drawn areas. You've got mini-games that use decently drawn assets that look half decent, but then you'll have a mini-game that uses a hand-drawn background that has been poorly posterized, birds in the form of pixel art sprites, and ugly dithered and rasterized BB, all in the same game. This is what I mean by an almost complete lack of cohesion. Definitely a market improvement on before. And there may be a decent game here if you go digging. Language Barrier kills it. Either way, I'm putting it in D tier. I think maybe it doesn't deserve the negative treatment, what with it being a crap load more playable than its predecessor, but I also feel like we're late enough in the DS's life to spare ourselves forced touchscreen minigames and to serve up only a small amount of voice acting. If this was a game from 2009 that was sat on, it only served to apply false expectations that came with time. BB and Tina, Das Grosse Reiterfest. Back on the Wii, we have the first and only BB and Tina game on the platform, and I pretty much skipped this one. I had trouble figuring out how to map the controls to a gamepad. It's a bunch of different minigames, each with their own annoying control method. It was too much effort. What's that, use a real Wii remote via Bluetooth or play it on one of my many modded Wii consoles? Don't tell me what to do! If I had the patience to do so, yeah, I likely would seek out getting it to work properly, but it's pretty clear this title features a bunch of minigames and some horse racing. I see the DNA here of what would appear in later games, so I'm pretty confident putting this in the D tier. Feel free to complain in the comments. Or perhaps give it a go yourself, in which case let me know how you went about mapping it to a gamepad. I did technically play it, so what do you want from me? For me to do my job? BB Bloxburg, Dear Verhext Schlossschatz. And the last of the DS games now. Dear Verhext Schlossschatz. Hit me with some amazing music out of the gate. It felt almost familiar, and the developer, Bitfield, I should have twigged. I should have noticed then, 
but I guess I had tunnel vision after playing so many of these games, I still didn't notice immediately. Then the map screen. Why does this seem familiar? I started the first stage, and then it became immediately obvious. Like a slap in the face from the woman you love. Eye-opening, and slightly arousing, this is Gianna's sister's DS. And the music and sound effects? Fabian Del Priel. Who the fuck else could it be? That distinct style that goes hard when it doesn't have to. It couldn't be anyone else. I was flabbergasted. Utterly speechless. The very last BB Bloxburg game for the Nintendo DS is a side-scrolling platformer from the team that brought us Gianna Sisters DS, and it's every bit as charming and brilliant as that game. And I couldn't believe it. A BB Bloxburg game where you can jump on top of enemies to defeat them. I honestly thought we'd never see such a thing. And here we are. The story is essentially that BB Bloxburg is bored on a school trip to the museum, so she casts spells on all the exhibits and now has to undo her handiwork. If I were to recommend any of the BB Bloxburg games, it would be this one, without a moment's hesitation. It goes straight into the S tier. And I will be absolutely returning to this game in the near future to stream it in full. I was simply not expecting to learn of a Gianna Sisters DS spiritual sequel starring BB Bloxburg. It's like they made a game just for me. Baby Bloxburg, Das Grosser, Hex and Bess and Renan, Svein. Things are going to feel a little bit samey for a little while, as most of the BB Bloxburg games after this one are essentially ports or a retooling of a previous title. I gave both versions of this game a go, they're both essentially the same game. The most notable changes compared to the first game are stackable items that become more effective the more of them you collect, like Diddy Kong Racing. There's a slipstream effect to help you overtake races in front of you, there's a drifting mechanic that gives you boosts like in Mario Kart, and the courses themselves are now more course-like, with less invisible walls, more shortcuts, and obstacles that change between laps to keep you on your toes. So yeah, in every way, this is an improvement upon the first racing game. Gone is the flat, full bright lighting, and there is some shading. The character models are, well I suppose they are better, though not particularly good looking. The 3DS version definitely benefits from the hardware's improved resolution and lighting capabilities. This would be an easy game to recommend in a vacuum, but as you will see, the third game is basically the same game, but available on more platforms, in more languages, and in a larger number of regions. With that in mind, I'll be putting Hex and Bess and Ren and Zvi in B tier. I'm really tempted to put it in C, but it is a league above the last broomstick racing title. BB and Tina. Things, Things are going, going to, to feel a little, little bit samey samey for a little while. As most of the BB Bloxburg games after this one are essentially ports or retooling of a previous title. This game was made to promote the movie of the same name, a live action BB and Tina film. It is completely shameless in that regard, opening with the film trailer and with the game's main collectible being still photographs from the film. Between the trailer and the photos, I feel like I've already seen the whole film. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't. As I said right at the beginning of this video, not a single home release of any of the BB films has English subtitles. Unless they do and it's just not advertised anywhere. Either way, I hope somebody got fired for that blunder. Yeah, we all know why this was made. Money. I don't think it's particularly bad, just kind of soulless? Ride around a bunch of empty ass Hyrule fields duct taped together, and complete basic horse riding segments to unlock photographs from the film? The game is supposed to be based on the film, but uses the children's book and cartoon aesthetic. The teenage girls this game would have been marketed to would likely have considered this game too childish even for them. E tier, now be gone with you. BB Bloxburg, Das Grosse, Hex and Bess and Renan, Dry. Things are going to feel a little, little bit samey for a little, little while. Me. Shit! So if you were paying attention during the segment on the second broom racing title, this is going to look awfully familiar. For all intents and purposes, this is exactly the same game as the second entry. Same courses, same unlockables, the stacking power-ups are gone, but that's pretty much it. Otherwise, the same deal. The game does look a lot more palatable due to improvements in hardware, and now all versions can enjoy 4-player local multiplayer, even on PC. Be careful if you're grabbing this on Steam. The BB Bloxburg speedrunning Discord will find you, and they will try to indoctrinate you into their cult. 
The added language options, achievements, and other quality of life improvements make this a solid recommendation. Grab the Steam version in a bundle or on sale, and for consoles you're pretty much limited to digital. Well, there are German PS4 copies out there, they're very much the same game and probably contain English text, so grab whatever's cheap or handy. It's a B tier, much like the second game, but a little higher due to the English text and ease of acquisition. BB and Tina. Things are gonna feel a little bit same for a little while. Shit! Another Nintendo 3DS game squirted onto more platforms. It starts with the same trailer, but at least we get some English subtitles here. Otherwise, this is the same game that released on 3DS with some slight changes to the game, like having to open your map instead of having it displayed on the top screen. They hide the nature of this game even more so here. There's no BB and Tina models on the character select, so when it gets to gameplay it feels like a smack in the teeth. You're still collecting photographs from the film, but now it makes even less sense. The film has been out for a while, and you can't watch it in any language besides German. It's not always clear where the next marker is going to appear, getting around is such a nuisance. One of the reviews on Steam questions if the developers even played their game, and I can't help but concur. This is one for the trash pile, but at least you can play it in English. E tier. BB and Tina at the horse farm. So these last two games I'm going to gloss over, not because they're bad, because they aren't, it's simply been a while since I played them, and because I played them quite close to each other, in my head I've probably merged the two of them together. I know the games are slightly different depending on platform, and that the PS5 versions I played are technically different from the PS4 versions, so to say what is and isn't in these games would be difficult for me. I played them back in July of 2022, and that was a little while ago, so forgive me. You know what to expect by now, you've seen the rest of the video. This is essentially the prior BB and Tina game, but now with a vague story attached. You're still completing horse riding challenges, and you're still having a miserable time, but it's still quite a marked improvement over the last entry. And there's a photo mode! If it wasn't for the trophies, I would not have bought this and played it. But it's what started me on the BB Bloxburg rabbit hole. This was like a tenner on eBay to the front door. I caved, and here we are. Gonna regret doing this, but this is a high B tier. B for BB. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Oh. 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 Oh yeah. BB and Tina more adventures with horses. Yep. The Swedes get to enjoy this one. The fun. So from what I remember of playing this one, it feels like a little step backwards gameplay-wise, but does have a more significant story than before, and your horse has a ton more stamina. You've got a mini-map too, so even though it feels floatier, it's definitely a better game. I did like the way the characters looked in the previous game more, but what can you do about it? If I were to recommend any of these BB and Tina games, it would be this one. It's far more competent and the edges are smoother. The trophies are just as straightforward as the last game, perhaps a little bit easier because the collectibles are a little less hidden. This is definitely a high A tier. Okay, so that's every BB Bloxburg game. I lied. There's one more, which I wasn't going to cover, but I know if I don't, the one BB Bloxburg fan on YouTube will mention this, so... BB Bloxburg. Grundschule Mathematik, Klasse 1 bis 4. Hallo Leute, ich bin Bibi Blocksberg und das sind meine Freunde Marita, Dennis, Moni und Florian. Wir schreiben bald eine Mathearbeit bei Frau Müller-Riebenseel. Doch Mathe gehört nicht gerade zu meinen Stärken. Aber wozu hat man Freunde? Look, maybe the reason I skipped this one is pretty obvious. It's an educational game entirely in German and the minigames I do understand I still somehow managed to get wrong. But no, you won't be happy until I put this in a tier, will you? So it can slot into E tier. Somewhere in E tier. Richtig! Das ist every Bibi Blocksburg spielen! Tiered for your pleasure. 
In F tier, we have Neustad im Chaos. It's a huge step down from the GBA games that came before it. In E tier, we have Grundschule Mathematik, or Brain Age for German kids. And both the 3DS and modern releases of Bibi and Tina, a movie tie-in for a movie only available in Germany. In D tier, we have De Grosse Reiterfest. Too many motion controls, not enough patience. Das Gestolen Hexbook, a follow-up to the first DS BB game, but just doesn't do enough to shake the stigma. De Grosse Unvetter, a game with promise that was bogged down by too many unclear objectives. And Ferian Alf Martinshoff, a game with the promising DNA of its predecessor that squanders it on a dog raising sim and some farming features. In C tier, in Band de Hex and Kugel, a game I may one day learn how to make progress in. Or I might just watch a speedrun. Das Grosse Hexen Benen Ressen, the first one, held back by shit course design. And the BB Bloxburg point and click games, charming titles that if I ever get my hands on an era appropriate machine, I will be likely to revisit. In B tier, Das Grosse Hexen Bessen Rennens Vi and Dry. Each one a little bit better than the last. The Great Paper Chase for being the first BB Bloxburg game available in English, and having perfectly acceptable minigames with some kind of plot gluing them together. At the Horse Farm for being a genuinely relaxing game with a great platinum trophy, and Folan Felix in Gafar, an enjoyable yet short blast of puzzle solving with a tacked on horse riding game. In A tier, Jump and Ride, which swaps out the usual BB and Tina horse raising bullshit with some platforming. Nothing special, but somewhat enjoyable nonetheless. De Magische Hexenkreis for oozing with charm, with its lovely pixel art and isometric environments, and magic spell casting gameplay, and more adventures with horses for vastly improving on at the horse farm in almost every regard. And in S tier, Der Verhext. Schlosschatz. Not only is it a lot of fun to say, it is the sequel to Diana Sisters DS that I never knew existed. It sits alone in S tier, but it is deserving of this accolade. A title I absolutely will be returning to for a live stream in the near future. Astonishingly good game, that. And there you have it. <laughs> a look back at the BB Bloxburg video game franchise. Every game is rated and tiered. I hope you learned something today. About your new favourite blonde German little witch girl. I know I did. I learned projects like this are a huge undertaking. Until next time, if we live that long.